Assalamualaikum. Um, this video, I will explain about chapter one. Uh, the first chapter in communication system design subject BTE 3233, right? And the objective of this chapter, uh, it actually has three objectives. First, to understand modulation and demodulation process. These two processes are the um, main topic of this course actually but in this chapter we will learn um, briefly uh, in general first about what is modulation and demodulation process then the second objective is to understand signal bandwidth and lastly to learn about noise analysis so for this chapter I divide um, the, the chapter into three to four units so that it's easier for you to understand better and also to uh, try yourself to understand each part or uh, the objectives of this chapter okay so this will be the introduction uh, what is actually a communication means okay basically we want to deliver uh, messages from one uh, place to the other place and um, but this time around for this course we want to use it to use uh, an electronic or electrical circuits okay so communication system basically this will be the sorry this will be the the, the, the um, general definition uh, it's actually a process of sending information from one point to another point or from one place to another place okay and it's always if uh, had involved these three important processes first is transmission all right how the message will be delivered uh receiving how the re the uh, delivered message will be received and lastly how the messages will be processed in order uh it can go through the transmission and receiving processes okay so the uh what it, you we already have used uh, some communication system since uh, we were little, we were kids until up now and the communication system have been evolved to be more modern, more sophisticated, more uh, faster than what we have or our grandparents have used before this. Okay, so the, the example will be telegraphy. I don't think that you or know what is telegraphy is. Telephony, facsimile. Uh, radio, satellite, optical fiber system, cellular, mo cellular mobile, okay? So as the uh, block diagram, okay, this will be uh, how the messages or the information uh, can be delivered in terms of communication system. So first we need to have input, all right? And that input will be uh, inject or input uh, or can insert into a transmitter all right so in this transmitter there will be a process uh going on inside a transmitter so that the the information uh can be transmit via transmission medium all right the transmission medium will be either you we want to use it with cables uh or without cables without any um or maybe using radio frequency Okay, and then the receiver will receive the delivered uh, messages or information from transmitter and process again so that the information can be extracted from the delivered signal. Okay, and then uh, the output will uh, let the uh, receiver know what is the information or what the uh, messages inside the information uh, signal. Okay, and uh, in this system, communication system, there will be one more part that might um, or can disturb the process of sending this information and uh, the signal or the messages might be lost in, in the middle of the transmission, okay, which what we call as noise. So this noise uh in any com not only communication system in any electronic or electrical systems uh we want to get rid of these noises 
and let the signal uh, can be uh, used without any uh, interference. Okay. So this will be the another block diagram to explain about communication system. So the upper part here is almost similar what we do the previous uh, slide. It's only that we use of source and destination uh, to uh, explain about the input and output. Uh, and the second one, this will be the example of how um, the signal or the, the information that we want to transmit. And this example, I think most of you may or may not, as whoever in my uh, age range may not this, all right? And to this actually how we can uh, access to internet before this, before we have uh, fiber optics and all. So we use this public telephone network as the transmission medium to deliver the message from a work, workstation, all right, through a modem and then go back to a server. So this server, either it will be this way or the other way around. Okay, so this is how the internet um, uh, happens before, before we have this gigabyte and terabyte uh, of speed. Okay, so this, I always tell my students, the modem that we use in this example is not like now, which is, uh, now the modem is very quiet, doesn't produce any any noise, any sound, but during uh, the, I think around 90s, when we use the modem and public telephone network to access to the internet, the modem would produce an, a very low, loud noise uh, and indicate that we actually using the internet. Okay, so I always got uh, scolded by my parents because I always use the modem in at the night. But actually at night, the, the, the uh, connection or the network is very good uh, compared to the day time. So I always got scolded on that and uh, my parents said, uh, do not use the internet uh, until midnight. Uh, so go to sleep because you, we have schools. <laughs> so that's, that's uh, the, the, the memory I had uh, when using the modem. Right, so this will be the component functions of each component inside a communication system I explained earlier. So you may uh, read it, but I want to highlight the red font here because uh, this uh, terminology or these words will be used uh, in next um, chapters, especially in chapter 4, 5, uh, and also 7 and 8. Okay, so what I, I want you to understand is the modulation is the name of the process. The modulating signal is the signal that we're going to deliver that contain information. Modulated signal is actually the signal that have been gone through a modulation process. Uh, what else? And demodulation here is a, uh, another one more, uh, the, the name of a process. Uh, which actually the, the, the opposite side of modulation process. So the electronic communication basically uh, the same as what we, we have learned in communication system uh, in the previous uh, slide. So this one, you need to put the electronic circuit. In order to use electronic communication, we need to emphasize that the communication system use an electronic circuit in order to uh, the process can be happen, can be done. Okay, so this is quite similar with the one that uh, we learned in previous slide. And you also need to know what are the types of signals that can be used in communication system. So the signal basically can be classified into, uh, I would say, three, three category, but in six types. Okay, uh, what I mean is the category will be continuous and discrete time, uh, analog and digital, periodic and aperiodic. So what are these means? Um, so for continuous time and discrete time, uh, actually, I think we can we can see the, the, the example after this. But for the periodic and aperiodic, Basically, we want to see either the signal is actually symmetry or not. So this 
kind of uh, category can only be um, proved by using a mathematical equation. So this will be the mathematical equation to prove that either the signal is actually periodic or aperiodic. Okay, so if it's symmetry or repeated, repetitive, it will call it periodic. But if it's not repetitive or it's not symmetry, we call it aperiodic. Okay, so this uh, kind of equation basically you have seen before, I think, um, during your mathematics classes, either in applied mathematics, all right, or maybe in uh, in other class, okay? Right, this will be the example of analog, uh, sorry, analog digital continuous and also uh, discrete time. So, for the analog signal, uh, it's actually, I would say that any analog signal based from uh, sine or cosine wave. Okay, so this will be the analog and continuous time. The digital signal will be about like pulse signal, which has, uh, or maybe if if you can understand binary, the binary also can be um, uh, considered as digital signal as well. When we uh, plot it on a graph, okay. So the analog uh, continuous, all right, this is digital and continuous for discrete, it's actually we want to make the signal to be in slices. So what we do is this analog uh, continuous time, we want to make it slice in slices where the slice here is actually in the same length. Okay, so this will be called as discrete time as well as for the digital. Okay, so we want to make it slice like this and we know that uh, the 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 Okay, the gap between the point over here is actually uh, similar. Okay, right. For analog signal, most of the uh, example that use analog signal is actually that related to speech. Speech mean uh, what what actually come out from our mouth, right? And the uh, frequency range for a speech or human speech is actually between two twenty hertz to twenty kilohertz. All right, and uh, that is sorry. That, that will be the frequency range of what the human can hear, can listen. But for the human speech, uh, it will be around hundred hertz to seven kilohertz. So it's still in the range of uh, hearing frequency range. Okay, and it can easily converted into electromagnetic signal. So this will be uh, explained uh, after this. All right. And then, um, but for 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 voice channel, we want to limit the frequency range between two three hundred to three hundred four uh, sorry three thousand four hundred hertz. All right, so that when we limit this frequency range, we can easily convert it into electromagnetic signal, and it can be easily transmitted uh, to the to the destination. Okay. And for digital signal, I think nowadays most of applications uses digital uh, signal such as uh, the latest one is the broadcasting. Um, even our TV is actually now using uh, digital signal, not more using analog. Uh, that is why um, some of the TV, we need to use uh, uh, what it, a converter, okay, so that we can receive the digital signal and then convert it into analog so that the TV can has uh, can process the signal inside that uh, or call it the, the receive signal. Okay, so it's actually from computer terminals and the the bandwidth depends on data rate. Data rate means uh, how many uh, signal that we have in uh, sorry how many um, or call it capacity or or content that we have in the uh, digital signal, okay? So basically, binary signal represent by 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, this is what we call as binary numbers. Uh, and and it, it actually, it is used to, to represent the uh, digital signal, okay? So how can we know that our communication system is good enough, is good uh, to have and can be used? 
by by anyone. So we always want to measure the level of efficiency uh, of our developed communication system by having these uh, questions. First, we want to know, all right, how close that the receive signal that that received by a receiver with the transmitter. Okay, so that is what this um, uh, sentence is mean. And then, does it use or needs any high quality transmission or maybe low quality transmission should, would be enough for the system? And what is the, uh, what it, the quality of the transmission? We can use for the analog system, we can use the SNR here. We uh, And for the SNR, we will learn about this later in this chapter. Uh, for the data signal, we want to know what is the bit error rate. All right, how many noise that is actually contained in the signal that has been transmitted okay so that would be uh the the uh, the i would say method uh in in knowing uh is our communication system good or, or not really good okay and then uh how much power do the does our do our communication system uses a lot of power? So if it's a use a lot of power, meaning that uh, the battery will be, uh, the lifespan of battery will be shorter, you need to keep charging, charge, 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 and then uh, the, it, you, you, the communication system cannot be used in, in long term. For the low power, all right, so the battery will be longer and you don't have to charge uh, frequently and in and maybe you the, the 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 possibility of that system to be used by others uh, might be uh, longer okay and what is bandwidth uh, of that system okay so bandwidth means uh you will learn about it in 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 next chapters we will always see about this bandwidth and all but we want to have low bandwidth for our communication system so that it can be used with more users on the same uh, communication system okay and then how much signal or signal size that we need to use in order to start transmit using our communication system so for analog system it will depends on the bandwidth okay and for digital system it will depends on the bit rate so the bandwidth and bit rate uh, must be calculated and you need to know uh, what is the what is the bandwidth or bit rate of your communication system that you develop okay so this will be the problems that always uh, bother the engineers or the technologists that uh, produce or develop the, a communication system so first will be on the technology problem Maybe there are some constraint on hardware. Uh, maybe it's quite big and uh, oh, it's, it's a complicated to do. And when it's big or complicated, it might be expensive. That it will be uh, the economical uh, aspect. And lastly, the law and regulation. So for communication system, we need to abide uh, and follow the law and regulation that has been uh, set. Uh, uh, by the nation or the country that, that use that communication system. For us in Malaysia, uh, we need to know what are the law and regulation to use or develop communication system uh, based on what has MCMC uh, guideline. Okay, so MCMC is the, uh, or SKMM, Suranjaya Komunikasi Multimedia Malaysia, uh, has all the uh, laws and regulation for all sort of applications in term of communication system and second is physical problems this one we need to tune or adjust on our communication system what is the bandwidth uh, is the signal power good enough or the noise is less or uh, more or too many inside the system that might be uh, corrupt the system uh, as a whole so we need to see this kind of uh, problems uh before during and after we develop the communication system okay what are the transmission i think some of you might know about this uh the communication system can be transmitted either uh i would say 
for me, I would I always like to say it in three ways. Uh, first is simplex. Okay, only one way of transmission, not the other way around. So it can only can go and not come back. Uh, second is half duplex. Half duplex is can be uh, transmit in in two direction, go and come back. But it cannot be done uh, at the same time. First, we need to wait until the message has been delivered, and then we can uh, send it back. Okay. For the full duplex, all right. Uh, this one, uh, it can be done in two ways as well, but both ways can be done at the same time. We don't have to wait for the other mess, the other uh, way to come first and then do the next process. No, we can do it at the same time. Okay, so I think for this one, if you read the example, you can understand what is the uh, simplex, duplex, and uh, sorry, uh, half duplex and full duplex. All right, so that's is it for this uh, part of the video. I will explain more on this chapter on the next video. Thank you.